Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy um i'm joined by a very good friend of mine karen graves who is an outstanding insurance professional and um we're going to talk about where what happens to the what what do you do with the false teeth that's it and karen's (laughs) going to explain everything um so karen thanks for joining me Thanks, Lewis. It's great to be here. And it's, I've never done it this, you know, we, we've done podcasts before, but never via, via the, the web. So it's great to actually do this because, um, yeah, it means that we can still keep things moving and, and things happen in this weird time that we find ourselves in. So thanks. Definitely. No, definitely. How are you finding it being at home oh, <laughs> before God. we start? God, it's just slightly unreal, isn't it? It feels a bit, you know, apart from the panic buying, which I just can't get my head around. Um, yeah. It just feels like it's it, it doesn't feel real, I think. Um, certainly for me it doesn't feel real and um, I know by the end of next week I'll be bored what's I'll be totally bored I think and that's uh, and that's uh, that's a problem I think that that everybody's gonna have to get their heads around yeah you get bored you start to not do the stuff you're supposed to you know know. and and I think most people at the moment are being really um, following the government guidelines I think and trying to do their best to to adhere to that and um, yeah which which is great um yeah, another, another week or so of this i'll you know it's murder or suicide isn't it really i know i know well, well hopefully we won't end up by it being a bunch of depressed um out of shape um people but I I've, I've, well. I've, I've gone diarized i mean i'm like putting stuff in my diary yeah. for when i'm working when i'm exercising yeah. Um, yeah. My amazing gym in Tufnell Park called CrossFit Tufnell Park. Shout out to them. Yeah. They're, lo- they're loaning equipment to their members so we can take it home. Cool. And yeah, they post a daily workout uh, yeah. on uh, Facebook. So like the community is pulling together to help yeah. each other through. It is great. And I think that the thing that made me chuckle this morning in the paper was I read an, um, a, a, an article or a piece by um, Fiona Shackleton, the divorce lawyer. <laughs> I think the divorce lawyers are expecting divorce rates to go soaring at the end oh, of this wow. self-isolation period. So that'll be really interesting to see. <laughs> I'll be interested to see if divorce rate goes higher or birth rate shoots up. Well, it's going to be probably both of them. Probably both of them will go go mad because of the different sets of people, aren't they? Well, maybe, but uh, yeah, yeah. So there'll be two yeah. things: loads of loads of uh, loads of, of, of newborns and loads of divorces. I think. <laughs> yeah it's crazy anyway so, so, so what do you mean well, by false teeth okay so i thank you very much for asking me to come and talk about this because um um i wanted to just sort of talk to you and and some of your listeners and viewers now um about um some of the stuff that's been happening to me over the last few months and it, it's it's about dementia um and my father and uh, my dad and the the kind of process and journey that, that we've been on and so I wanted to talk about what do you do with the false teeth because actually I did find us standing standing in a room thinking well what do you do with the false teeth um, after he passed away on the 1st of February which I like to think of as my dad's very personal um, Brexit um, uh, uh, action really uh, the fact that it was the 1st of February and we were no longer as part of Europe he just thought well that's it now then so um, <laughs> I like to think it was his last Brexit protest but never mind so <laughs> Um, but um, <laughs> so uh, hopefully this is not going to be a depressing chat about dementia, but I've learned a load of stuff over the last eight months. And I just wanted to yeah. try and share some of that. And if anything of your of your viewers and listeners uh, chimes with them that they may do, I just think that would be great. Um, because I've learned an awful lot over the last eight months. So as a kind of um, very brief sort of intro to this, um, my dad uh, was, was 88 when he, when he passed away um, in February. Um, but the previous eight months, the, prior to that, in December 2018, he'd been diagnosed with, with vascular dementia. But he'd probably had it a little bit before then. And so there's right. lots of things that I've learned and, and come to realise over the last few months that, that we could do better. And um, my parents live in Leicester. I live in London. Um, and, 
you know, we had a great relationship, but not one where we were on each other's doorsteps. And I think that that also played a part um, in some of the yeah. stuff that I've had to do lately. And also, I don't have any brothers and sisters. So I've gone through the whole thing, you know, with great support from family and, and some very close friends. But actually, you end up, it's good and bad, because at least you can make decisions and make them. But you don't have yeah. anybody else that can help you make them or do the running around or share part of the burden of doing all this. So it's a it's a bit of a fine balance. So um, my <laughs> so my my wonderful dad um, got vascular dementia. And uh, as a, just a very brief where uh, where I got to, um, I was away in the States on a business trip um, and found that my mother, who is 86, <laughs> had decided to crash a car. Marvelous. Um, broke a kneecap. Excellent. Um, spent a week in hospital, came out with a comedy Norman Wisdom cast, leg straight in front of her, foot in the air. Oh, right. um, then yeah. when she came home, um, she then probably had a stress heart attack <laughs> because obviously my dad was still living at home and we can talk about the care in a minute. But um, yeah. and she was his main carer, really. Um, and they've been married for 66 years. So a long time, a long time to be together, really. I think you get less as yeah. a prison sentence in some cases, but there you go. So... <laughs> Um, long time to be together and so she then spent a month in a convalescent hospital recovering from the you know her, her, her leg and her and heart yeah. attack and that left me in a position of um, working out what to do with my dad now um, and I think one of the reasons I think it's important to talk about this is that we prepare ourselves for so many things whether it's work a, a new job um, yeah, even our holidays we prepare and plan for things children whatever it might be but I'm not entirely sure because I did not do this I didn't plan for what I had to do for my parents when they became old um, and needed my help and needed, you know, and became incapable of making their own decisions. For, for my dad, my mum is still, my mum is fantastic, very bright, um, fit now, no longer driving, thank the Lord, um, <laughs> but back at home um, and um, is getting on really well. And so she's, she's having a sense of enjoyment about it in her life now because a lot of the burden has, has gone of looking after my father and the stress levels. And, yeah. and while she misses him, she's great. So that's good. Great. But awesome. my, <laughs> so, so um, I, I find myself in a position of suddenly having to trust all of the um, services that, that you, you, you read in that you, you hear about. And I mean, my, my parent, mum and dad are very normal. Um, I don't have a, a particularly privileged background or anything so you know it th there wasn't necessarily a lot of money for care and I can tell you one thing now care for elderly is incredibly expensive so um going along that and and, and also how you so make, both, both like homes and and homes, people who are coming homes in and people, uh, people coming in so and you can get yeah. help from the the, the your, your council and your local social service and adult social services and so on but it is um, and unfortunately, I was in a position to be able to help them, but um, it is quite, um, if you don't plan for it, it can be quite, um, it's a very unplanned high expense. Um, yeah. And so I think what I, I wanted to talk about to people, whether there were some things that I've learned along the way and who to go to for help if you find yourself yeah. in a position. Um, and so we can talk about the finances, I think, first of all, because I have a, one thing I would encourage people to do as one of Karen's top tips here is get yeah. powers of attorney for your parents. Um, right. They only ever get used um, if they need to be used. Um, you can't so use them really doing early. that like, as yeah. early as possible? As early as possible because you, you don't use them until you need to use them. You know, you can't just suddenly get one and then decide to use it the next day if your parents have, you know, have all their faculties. There are two, there's health and welfare and then there's finances. So get powers right. of attorney for both of those for your parents, because um, I have that for my mum, uh, but didn't have it for my dad. And so when he when he um, was diagnosed with dementia formally, um, yeah. it then changes the whole landscape of what you can and you can't do for somebody. And you have to look after the interests of both of them. And this is something else I've come to realise as well, that, that when one person... Um, you, you can't make decisions for them. They become um, a ward, if you like, of the, the um, Court of Protection and the, the social services. That they make decisions with you, but ultimately they make decisions uh, in the best interest of the person that they are in effect caring for. And they may, very different, they may be different decisions from yours. Fortunately, that didn't happen to me, but you could find yourself in an interesting position. So in terms of looking at financing these, these um, these options. How do you 
do yeah. you have to ask permission you have to ask permission from your parents presumably to do that so it's it gets yes. a conversation they have to, they have have to, to agree to it they have to they have yeah. to agree to it um yeah. and you know it's a couple of grand a, a pop really to, to get them into play yeah. so it but it's, it's so worth doing because it allows you to make decisions because i find myself in a position where um we were looking at you know could we sell the house to to then pay for care but of course at that yeah. point then when they jointly own the house you can't do anything because they won't allow you to make decisions to sell a house which partly my dad's name and partly my mum's to protect his his interest in the house and so I would have had to have made an application to the court um, to apply to sell the home on his behalf and my mother's behalf and they don't give that willingly and that's a by the time you've done that that's another five or six thousand pounds to make an application for something that's very likely not going to succeed so right. you, you need to you need to kind of balance that out with with doing something fairly simple and getting a power of attorney because it does give you the ability to make decisions for them um, and once you get the council involved who are fantastic investor by the way um, it, you become to have very different conversations and when this happened and I was on a business trip and my mom was in hospital, I arranged for full-time care for him at home by the carers he had coming in uh, for half an hour every day to get him up in the morning and dressed. And my mom would take care of him for the rest of the day, um, yeah. etc. So I arranged for them to come in um, for full-time uh, while I was in the States and until I got back. Um, and then we found another solution, see what was going to happen to my mom, um, etc. Um, because at that point she was broken her leg was was out for a week or so um but then of course she was then out for much longer um and uh we started to go through money having full-time carers at home because you have to have to have nighttime care for my dad as well um it just started to eat through their savings um at a rate of knots um, and so i had to come up with a solution to protect everybody's um interests um, and I, I then sort of put him into respite care for a month. You, everybody is entitled to a free month's respite care uh, over a certain. Right. Um, and he had, and so um, I found a, a home close to where they live, uh, where he went for it's uh, you know, in the beginning just for a month um, yeah. to give everybody a break. And um, while my mom was away, um, he could be there, being well looked after. Um, she could not didn't have to worry about him and could concentrate on getting well. And then we would see where it was ultimately. He ended up staying in that care home but that decision um you know the adult social services are the people that you talk to and they will find a home um that can take somebody with particular needs and so it had to be a home that was happy to care for somebody with vascular dementia um and so he ended up going there um on something like the 12th of june of last year um that when when you were trying to convince somebody with dementia to leave their house it's very difficult because the world gets quite small and that's possibly the worst conversation I've ever had with anybody to try and convince my dad to, to leave the house and go to the care home. And, and he ended up viewing it as a holiday. When he got there, it was very nice. Um, they were lovely to him. Um, and so he felt very comfortable. Um, and I can't speak highly enough about the, the care home he did go to. And he ended up staying there then. So he ended up moving on the 12th of June, standing for a month, and then staying there until he he, he died on the 1st of, of Feb. But they were fantastic to him. Um, so he awesome. ended up staying there. But one of the things I have realised in my absence, because I think lots of us live our lives like this, I think you're different, Liz, because you, you, you work closely with your mum, don't you, as well? She works with you in your office, doesn't she? She works with me in my office, yeah. And that's a great relationship to have. I think a lot of us have long-distance relationships, and that... Um, you, when you're not there all the time, another tip that I, I, I realise is that people who are caring for people with dementia are very good at hiding it, particularly of a certain generation. And so uh, when you turn up for a weekend, you know, for you go up to see them for a day or, or take, take Ed with me, his grandson, to see him, um, uh, he, it's always great because they're pleased to see you. It's new and you don't, you notice changes, but you don't understand the extent of the changes. And I think that's, if you have elderly parents, and one of them is acting as the carer, main carer for the other, really take some time to, to, to listen. I didn't listen enough, I don't think, or, or observed well enough um, the kind of stress that my mum was under, particularly at night, because she would worry that he would get up in the middle of the night and, I don't know, go for a bit of a wonder or fall down the stairs, whatever it might be. 
So yeah. I think that contributed to her whole um, issues that she had. Yeah. And so that I guess would be you're living there. It's quite it's, hard. When you're not to... living, it's quite because there are, everybody's always so pleased to see you when you go. So you don't yeah. really see what it's like. And people are very good at hiding it, um, particularly because I think it's getting better these days. But particularly, certainly for people my mum's and dad's generation, you know, having something like dementia is something that you just didn't talk about or want people to know about. So, um, yeah. so we got him, got him into this care home. Thank you to the adult social services and the people that you need to speak to. And, and right. um, did it via phone and just said, let's get him into a place because we need to to stop the full time care at home to to protect any savings they had. Because um, it was, it was the first fun. month you said the first month was free, and the first month was free, and, you, and then we looked at um, we then looked at um, him staying there and what that might look that might look like, and so you know my dad went to a, a nice care home, probably it's certainly not the worst, probably not the best, but it, it catered for all of his needs. There were about um, thirty people there, um, three 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 men, the, the rest were were were, were, were women. Um, and they were they were geared up to care for people with with dementia and um, and, and so on. So yeah. he, he, they gave him excellent care, and I have nothing I have no faults with any of the care he had there. But what did come as a shock, um, I think, to me is is when you you have to then start to fill in countless forms um, and talk to social service, and you end up doing things that you never expected to do. So. You know, I formally signed away my dad's liberty because he was not. Once he got into the system and they realised quite how poorly he was, um, he was never ever going to come home again. And that was a, a conversation that was difficult to have um, with my mum. Did you know that at all? Did I he know? Didn't know that. He, didn't. he didn't know that. No, no, he didn't. He didn't realise right. that, that he was never going to come home again. But once yeah. he was there, you know, there was that well he's going he will be staying here now and that's you know there, there comes then a point where you actually can't bring him home you because you can't now. care for him you know and so yeah. i formally signed away his liberty um which is an interesting thing to do for your father um what is that, what does that actually mean it means that he, he he can't leave the care home without authority from the care home they have to they, they, ah, right. no oh, so, so, so he's, them, yeah you, he's there yeah. um for his own protection and his own safety um and his own well-being and one of the things i found is and there is this desire to keep people at home for as long as you can but being in the care home gave him back his dignity um actually because they know how to care for somebody um and you can struggle at home and it might be all right on the surface but there are things that you um I, you know certainly things that that they can do much better than 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 i would ever think my mum would ever be able to do um yeah. particularly it's always 80 odd Sorry. Yeah, it's always that thing because I've got two of my grandmas. Both of my yeah. grandmas are still alive, and they're both ninety-eight. Yeah. And one lives in Cape Town. One lives in That's London. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's great. But the one in Cape Town always said, "Do ne never send me to a care home." Oh my! I, I thought, my... Don't send me to a care home. Yeah. In the end, she said, "I really would like to go to the care home." Yeah. Um, and so, in the end, she, she's in the care home now, and. Um, and she loves it actually i mean she her luckily her you know her mind's still there um yeah. she's got some other problems like eyesight and all these things but but she gets really well looked after yeah. you know her food gets made for her yeah. you know all of, all of those things i think she's yeah. better like she's better there than she would have done at home my other grandma she is in her own flat yeah. and we're going through she hasn't got dementia her mind's there but she still needs a lot of help and care yeah. Um, and yeah. so my dad and um, me and my wider family are all going through this thing of like, you know, we have to go see her. You know, you feel responsibility to see her. She's like, sod coronavirus. I'm 98. I'm going to die anyway. Come see me. Yeah. You know, you're like, uh. and now she's like more like she's more interested in not being lonely than correcting yes. coronavirus. Yeah. You know, and I think so lonely, yeah. and <laughs> loneliness is a big factor. And that's the kind of thing that I worry about now as well, is that now my mum's on her own. You know, is she going to get lonely? But she's actually a very, um, she likes her own company. She's very self-sufficient in that way. And so I, I'm becoming less worried about that um, once you suddenly end up living on your own. Yeah. In your I, found like, um, I found also that, um, so with both of my grandmas, that the, the magic, well, the magic, but, but the B word comes up a, a, a lot, which is burden. And you find yes. that like older people don't want to be a burden That's on right. their That's right, they don't. Yeah, and they and and that's part of not wanting to talk about things. So 
I, I sort of felt my way through a system I knew nothing about. So if, if anybody's listening to this and they're thinking, oh, I've got parents about the same age, get powers of attorney while you can before you're unable to, because it does make your life easier about how you make decisions, particularly financial decisions. The one thing that, you know, I would also encourage people to do as well is get their grandparents online. My mum, fortunately, is a silver surfer. I love her for that. <laughs> because the fact that she has all her bank accounts online and oses oh, yeah, you know, the debit card and the whole contactless <laughs> thing, I love yeah. because that gave me the ability that she gave me access to, to their online bank accounts. Then. And that actually gave me some insight into what their incomes were with their with their um, pensions from, um, yeah. you know, their state pensions and their uh, kind of a small private pension. So they, so I actually had an insight and understanding of, of what they had coming in and what to do with it. And also you've got access as well. So get yeah. people online. I, I love the fact that my mum does that because she'll sometimes say to me, oh, I've just been checking my bank account. Can you have a look, see if this is right? And I think, yeah, I can. So um, it, it's quite- And is she on the, um, it's really cool. And, and, and can you have a video call with her? Like, is she on um, FaceTime no, or she's something? Got quite a little, uh, no, I was thinking of getting her an iPad, actually, that we could have FaceTime yeah. with. Um, but, but, she, but she's got a little sort of, tiny, tiny, very sort of, functional laptop, and she does all of her banking and, and ordering online. She orders online and, and stuff for her food, if she can get it delivered at the minute, never mind. Uh, um, yeah. And so that, that's, <laughs> that's, a real, um, that's a real bonus because that gave me some insight. Rather than having to fly through bits of paper, know where bank account details are, how do you get into it? At least it's there in front of you. And I got that. So that was a good thing. So I would encourage, you know, get powers of attorney and, and at least get them online with the bank accounts because you can then see them. And that's helpful um, when you're trying to sort out the, be the best route forward. Um, and so having got him um, into the care home, it then becomes a question of um, paying for it. You know, so, you know, he gets a... Um, a, a an allowance. People don't get an allowance from the, the um, social services. They use their pension to pay for it, but inevitably there's a top up fee. So as individuals and we're working and we're planning for things and looking to save and whatever, um, I found myself, um, which is fine and you pay it. I'm not moaning. It's not a moaning conversation. It's a practical one of, of suddenly yeah. contributing, you know, an extra thousand pounds a month to something I haven't budgeted for at all with no sense or understanding of how long that might go on for. All right yeah yep. and that that's and this is it and so you know this is in a, a nice care home um but 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 um it's probably um you know probably about the average that people will pay i would say so that Crazy. that's something to be it's mindful also, of yeah also i guess it's something that just hits you straight, on, straight away like you don't it's not like no um i'm planning for it it's like you don't ever want your parents to get ill no. obviously you never quite know and these things just happen straight away yeah so it's yeah it's supposed to be quite like um yeah strange thing to so be faced with things. it is and i don't think you then you know and the other thing that struck me is in in and around all of this in terms of suddenly being presented with car accident heart attack a dad with dementia a care home working out what we do um just all right let's go pile it on is then you're also working and thinking about your own career and and how yeah. that you balance that out and, and how full your brain gets with stuff um, that you you sort of have to process work things and make time for that. But your mind is always elsewhere, you know, particularly waiting for the next phone call. Because once, you know, once I found that once my dad was in the care home, there would be phone calls, you know, with the best will in the world. He, you know, he would be ill and they'd phone and talk to you. I'd get phone calls in the middle of the night because he'd got up and gone for, you know, um, so... It, it, it's a very, you know, it becomes quite an all-consuming part of your day, your life. And, and I don't think, I hadn't realised how much of a sort of, not stress, maybe it's stress, I don't know. But it became a thing that was constantly there in my head. That I was, yeah. you know, wait, waiting for the phone call that said, um, you know, either my dad has died or something has happened or, or whatever it would be. Um, and so it becomes a thing and you, you don't know, you don't know when it's going to end. That's the other thing, yeah. you know, it's a yeah. very interesting sort of kind of limbo land that, that you that you're in. Um, yeah. So that and it's for my mum as well, you know, so clearly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I haven't been through it, obviously, but it's obviously it must be quite strange because it's your parents, your parents, most of your life are coming yeah. for you. Yeah. Right. That's right. Um, they do. And then you suddenly be then, you, then the tables are twitched and you become their carer. And that's not something that I was 
I guess I kind of, I think we all know well, that's going to happen, but we never really concentrate on what that might mean. And it's a very, it's a very, um, very interesting position to find yourself in, really, uh, that you begin yeah. up being the carer of your, of your parents and the one that they, you know, suddenly want you to make all the decisions about. And it's like, oh, you know, um, so another yeah. Karen's tip. So when my dad was in the care home and he with his dementia, so those people that have family members will probably with dementia know this. But if you don't, it can be quite. <laughs> so when my dad had dementia, I quit, learned very quickly that I may not be Karen when I used to go in there. I could be somebody else, maybe his sister. Um, he'd yeah. get so confused with the lady that ran the care home, who's lovely. Um, so I, don't don't waste your time telling, trying to tell somebody with dementia who you are if they think you're somebody else, because it just gets everybody upset. Go with it. I just went with it, right. you know. And it was, and it, you know, the moments yeah. where there is clarity and and he knew who I was were fantastic. Um, there was a time when I <laughs> when I popped off down to see him um, on my own, and uh, he was asleep when I turned up. So um, he woke up. I, oh, darling, it's you. I said, yeah, it is. He said, it's really lovely to see you. I always buy my newspaper. He loved a newspaper. We could read it. He read it about eight times a day. It's fine. It's okay. right, so so, so um, he said, oh, darling, it's lovely to see you. And then would fall asleep again. So I'd sit there and kind of do my emails or, you know, just read the paper, whatever. And he'd wake up yeah. and he'd be so pleased to see me all over again. <laughs> That's true. So, <laughs> It was, it was actually from my perspective quite pleasurable that somebody was pleased to see me twice that that you know in a day it was lovely <laughs> so you kind of have to have to kind of go with things like that thinking no oh, at least when he yeah. wakes up he's going to be really pleased to see me all over again i sit there going go to sleep again go to sleep again because you're going to it's actually quite nice when you are when somebody is so pleased to see you so i, I used to get that yeah. that was lovely um but it just it becomes a different environment to see to see your parent in often quite in person yeah. because they sit in community rooms and um, which is lovely because yeah. I think living with other people when you have dementia is a good thing actually there's a lot more stimulus than there is at home with just my, my mom and dad on their own together being in a community yeah. in a care home is a much better environment I think Stim, you know mental stimulation so yeah. if you go and, and and somebody in your family gets dementia go whoever they think you are go with it it's just fine it's just yeah. fine it's does really it take fun. a while to like accept that no not for me I, I i went i went with it quite quickly i went with it quite quickly actually so um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um and so back onto karen's tip list so there's that go with that and back just to finish off the finances side of things clearly most yeah. people these days have a will just make sure they're up to date okay my ours were very simple my mum and dad's were very simple you know to each other um, and it's yeah. just easier if you have all that in place. Hundred um, uh, percent. You know, just a very simple thing, but can make a huge difference. Um, yeah. So, as you go through all this, I then had the um, worry—not the worry, yeah, no, the worry—of my mum now being at home on her own, um, and ensuring that they get what they're entitled to in our in our um, society that we live in. We we have. Um, you know, they've been playing national insurance all their lives, etc. To make sure that they got what they're entitled to is no mean feat. So another tip is Age UK. They are a fantastic organisation. So Age UK is not just there to, or uh, as other as other organisations are, to not just deliver hot food and a, whatever. Age UK have financial right. specialists that go around to talk to, in this case, my mum to or your parents, and talk to them about the money they have. What their entitlements are you know what their income is and then they will then with you and with your my, with my mum in this particular case go through and make sure they are receiving everything that they're entitled to within our social welfare system and that was a huge huge weight off my mind that a financial service professional for free of charge this is free of charge all right wow. goes around wow. and assesses all of the incomes Look at the outgoings. Works out if my mum's entitled now to any um, uh, sort of extra care, you know, in sort of um, an attendance allowance, that kind of thing. Is she getting the right yeah. pension that she's getting? Is she receiving the widow's pension bit from my dad? They've run through and done all of that and make the application for you to the social services. So they fill in these myriad forms that Amazing. you have to fill in, um, and, and you and they know the right answers to put in. We don't. 
So when they yeah. ask some particular questions they ask are quite nuanced. Um, and we, we probably would fill them in in a slightly different way, but they fill them in in a way that they know the social services will understand. And, and I think um, that was a huge help in making sure that my mum then, when she's on her own, has received all of her entitlements that she's, that she's due. And that's taken the worry off her, worrying about being able to afford stuff when my dad, sort of, you know, pension and, and, and et cetera, um, has gone. Um, and she's just back yeah. with her own stuff. So that's, I cannot. It's a great tip because a lot of people forget this. Like oh, there are people who help Age out. UK. I mean, Age UK. Age UK. Age UK. Been absolutely fantastic. And um, the person that goes to see my mum will email me and tell me what she's doing. Um, and and, and why she goes to see your mum and stuff. And Yeah, they, she goes around to see her and, and they, she has an appointment with her goes around and checks Amazing. the application but they but what they do is they submit it and they follow it through the system for you as well they don't just fill it in walk off they t they fill it in take it submit it and monitor it all the way through and be there to help answer all the questions or anything that may come back it they are fantastic um and just found them i hadn't had a plan to go and talk to age uk it was my mum phoned them for to ask a question yeah. about something or other i can't remember what it was so um just by chance um and then she just clicked into this system and they were absolutely amazing as a charity incredible so that would be another tip get help and somebody amazing. somebody like age uk are, are, are amazing absolutely amazing yeah what do you think what, what would your tip be now with like a lot of people not being able to go see their their elderly relatives now with, with the COVID. <laughs> um well like that's, that's, be tough, that's right? very true you know and, and i have to say um, it, if this doesn't sound a bit like not weird you know my, my dad died on the 1st of feb and his funeral was on the um, 18th of february um do you know what i'm glad it's not now a month down the line you know um because i'm not quite i'm not entirely sure how this is going to work because i wouldn't have been able to go and see him no um, you no. know i wouldn't have been so i you know Tough now. I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about getting my my grandma um, a dongle and an iPad, so she yes. we can do the yeah. calls. Yeah. Like we don't really want to go around and infect her, even though she wants no. us to come around. So it's, it's Mother's Day this weekend, and my mum said to me, "She's not coming, are you?" Yeah. I, went, oh, I was thinking about it. She said, "Don't bother." She said, "I'm really fit and healthy." She said, "I know you are, but don't bother coming round." I thought, "All right, then." Yeah. Work. But 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 I think so. For my mum, you know, I think care homes are different places where they have to protect all of the the residents. I was going to say inmates, but that would have been so politically incorrect. So please, can we take that off the recording? You have to have some humour. We can't edit it. We can't edit it. <laughs> so the residents, so they have to protect them as well. But but in terms of um, of my mum, so she's she's got she's online, and so um, I, I phone her nearly every day. And as does uh, as does Ed, my, my my son, he phones her uh, nearly every day. I go and see her when I can. Um, she's got. I think it's the one thing that that um, I have noticed. Um, which is is heartening um, as how um, the neighbours are playing their part in in looking after. I mean, they've they've lived in this particular where they've lived for forty plus years, and so um, she's got you know four or five neighbours that just go round and knock on the door anyway. Forget this current Amazing. and say, is there yeah. anything we can get you? Do you want to take you out? And so she's um, it becomes a very interesting balance, I think, because you know she's she's fit um as, as an 86 year old lady can be um but she's quite frail so yeah. it becomes but she's got all of her marbles entirely and so it's a very difficult thing having just yeah. done it with my dad who who was you know who has had dementia and, and clearly um was not able to make decisions for himself um yeah, it, yeah. so my mum's sharp but physically are getting a little frail if you see what i mean yeah yeah so it, it and then i'm like worrying about that a bit but so no you and then we've got the added challenge of uh yeah of can't going around but i mean the community sounds great and i think a lot of uh of yeah. communities pull together i mean i know in our area there's a facebook group and uh, we've we're messaging um people that are living on their own who are who are older to help them out and stuff yeah um and then with this technology so the video stuff and yeah if, if older people can get into it then oh, it I think it's, make yeah. so I, it's one of those things that you know I, I like technology and I've always been a fan of it and I know it's got the downside with social media but actually at times like this 
um, it, it is, and it's a very powerful tool if you can get people hooked into it because it that face to face conversation and contact, even though it might be through a screen, is really yeah. important, isn't it? That that sort of being able to see somebody yeah. as well as just hear them. Um, and so, yeah. you know, I've got an old iPad knocking around here actually, and I thought. You know what? When I when I can next turn up, which will be post this event, clearly um, I might go and get her hooked up on FaceTime because that'll be easy for yeah. us then. Um, Definitely. I mean, I'm so, thinking I might go and I I might need to do my grandma like tonight or tomorrow. Um, yeah. And uh, but we'll see. Yeah. No, it's it's great yeah. to use to use technology. So, so, I, so I think that that so it, it is a question of, of of getting ready for stuff to be thrown at you. So make sure they've got wills. Get powers of attorney in place for them. Um, <laughs> you know, listen look hard look hard at what's happening in in your parents household you know I, I i had a great relationship with them but didn't probably look hard enough as to how stressful and difficult it was for my mum yeah uh, and i and yeah. I'm, I'm i'm a bit peeved with myself for that if i'm honest um yeah. because people's behaviors change and um uh i, I think that i noticed that um there was always that desire to make sure that people saw my dad as he as he always had been seen um, uh, in, in terms of being a very, very handsome, very sort of, you know, tall guy. Um, uh, and that kind of that gentlemanly facade that he had, um, my mum wanted to maintain and, and that stopped her asking for help. So you have to be really careful that you, you make sure that you that they you, you watch and listen. Um, because I don't think I did that hard, that well enough, if I'm honest, you know, so I think yeah, there are yeah. signs and clues there that now I would have picked up on. And, and um, uh, so that that's, and, you know, throw yourself onto the. the to do that. It, it, is. it must be it must be dur dur when you're going through it. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's also but, you know, and, and also I think you, people need to if this starts to happen to them, they need to be very honest with their work colleagues. Um, about that they're yes. going through it okay so because it it mentally your brain gets full of stuff stuff that you might never have had to, to have dealt with before um and 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 actually you have to sort of start to be a bit um judgmental about what's more important and, and we all tend to put work first i think we have this desire i think um to to make sure yeah. That, yeah. that we maintain um, our working lives and the facade that we have in our working lives and that and that becomes a um, quite important part of what we do every day but and then when you get something coming at you with a side like this and you're coping you're trying to learn about dementia you're trying to navigate your way through social services um, you're trying to deal with you know other people in the families of nieces and nephews and my mum not really coming to terms with the fact what they can and can't do after a certain point for my dad because he's no longer there to do things for you know, he's in a different space yeah. um, and, and that his best interest may not be what they see as being his best interest. And that's a very difficult right. scenario sometimes. And so I treated this like a um, an operational exercise. It's the only way I could deal with it was to treat it like a business problem and and, and yeah. chunk it down into um, things that, and problems that I could solve, problem solving, that I could go and solve those problems and then try to not let them get to me so that meant that I could then do everything else we're still supposed to be doing so um at, at some point you, you do get the chance to be a bit more emotional about everything but but I found to cope with stuff and then was to problem solve it all and try not to yeah. feel too much when you're going through the process um because the other thing I'd never done before was then um you know when when he did um die was was it was then very much my mum said well you know you can sort out the funeral now and I'm like great never had to do that before either so and again you know that's a how does that work so um i hadn't i hadn't done this before which is where i came to with the false teeth because when i cleared my dad's room out you know uh -huh. uh, after he died and gone to the undertakers um you know the things get left in the room and you know and you are confronted with a set of false teeth wrapped in a in tissue and it's like jesus I, you know of all the things i was expecting to do it was not necessarily throw my dad's false teeth away but that's what I did. But so it, it's right. kind of for me, it's one of those things that, you know, is quite, um, it's not funny. Well, it is. It is funny, but it's also like, oh, God, really? And you just have, there are things that you, you have to do and um, 
space yeah. and, and, and work out. And one of them is sorting out, you know, funeral arrangements. Um, and so the good old co-op in Leicester on Countersill or in, in Leicestershire was, was where we went. Average cost of a funeral, I think, these days is about four grand. So that's got to come from somewhere. Um, I think you, there is an entitlement, I think, um, depending on where you are in, in the social care scale that you can apply. Um, there's a pension credit. Um, there's a, a funeral service, burial credit, I think, that you can get um, if you apply for it. But um, it, but you're looking about four grand at an average price, I, I found, not being too fancy. Um, and then... Yeah. And then you sort of sort of take it from there. The only other thing that really surprised me, and this might people might think, what is she talking about? But I've told a couple of friends, and they've gone, yeah. So when you see movies and TV programs, and then somebody's got a mantelpiece and they've got a nice little urn on it that says, well, "Who's that? That's Great Uncle Arthur," and they kind of pick him up and they hold him up, whatever it is. Let me tell you, when you pick up, because I never expected this. I've never clearly done this before. I don't know what I was expecting. Some kind of, I don't know, dust. I don't know, sand. You know what I mean? Kind of, anyway, so I picked up his um, remains because he was cremated from the undertaker. And I was expecting, I don't know, Lewis. I don't know, but Chris backsized. You know what I mean? Sort of, I don't know. So what you actually, what you actually get is something the size of a shoebox. Wow. Um, that is sealed clearly yeah. um inside it is a paper bag sealed signed as these are the um of your loved one's remains yeah but it's enormous it's like two bags of flour together and it weighs the same <laughs> so <laughs> you get given so i kind of thought there's some delicate dust kind of you know thing and so now when people say, oh, I'm going to go and scatter my dad's remains, I'm thinking, hang on a minute. It's be like for me, it's like a scene from The Great Escape where you've, you've dug in a tunnel and you're letting it, you know, it's a huge, huge bag of remains, which is something I was not expecting. You know, she gave me this box and I'm like, oh, I'm a big, strong girl. It's kind of like, what is in here? How many people are in here? You know, it's just your dad. Really? Really? So um, it, it's that, that really sort of, didn't shock me but it made me think well who knew who knew that's what you get i mean it, yeah, it is it's something that you you don't expect you don't expect it you expect something right. delicate and light and i don't know sort of and a nice little uh, china well, you, right. you can get that if you're going to have them interred somewhere and stuff but um so i don't know mum said we'll go and scatter him somewhere i thought we'll be there all day scattering him it's going to take us hours <laughs> it's like you know just <laughs> <laughs> so we have to decide what to do with to do with him. I, uh, him do, yeah. so, um, I love him dearly, by the way. Bless him. But it's like really, it's an enormous box. It's nothing light and fluffy and 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 powdery. It's enormous. So be prepared for that one as well, because that took me a bit by surprise, really. You know, I thought they'd given me like the whole week's worth, but no, it was just my dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> You have to, I found that you, you know, I found that humour helps me get through this, if I'm honest, because... Um, it's good to think about it in a good, I mean, you're thinking about it in a very positive way, and... Uh, yeah, and, uh, it, it, it is positive. Memories, so. Yeah, it is, and, um, you know, there's been some points over the last few months where I had some very lovely, quiet moments with my dad, just he and I, and then some moments where it's just, <laughs> you know, it's just been, um, you, you have to seek the humour in it, because if not, it's just it's just too depressing, yeah. I think, to, to when yeah. you see somebody that you um have admired my, my dad was um, a sportsman um a cricketer and uh fantastic as well and some of my friends will know because they've seen me, the postings i've done about him and his career um so at, at a time when sportsmen played sport for love and not for money i'm sure they played for yeah. love these days still but there's a lot more money involved um and so was quite well known in his time um um, but but so and I think it's a very shocking thing with dementia that you can see somebody that was so talented and 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 fit and healthy and but he was six four big guy lovely um, sort of reduced to a a, a a shell of who they were and, and 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 the things that they forget and I think for me the saddest thing was when he forgot about cricket um, he, I mean, he yeah. played it all his life and then became an umpire and stuff. Um, he just forgot about cricket um, and your memories just get reduced to very early days I found he remembered things from his childhood and when he talked about home he didn't mean the home you know his house he, he meant the home that he grew up in so you have to kind of 
kind of keep uh, a bit of head thinking when you see how's a home you think that which one we're talking about um so it, yeah. it changes your whole relationship with them changes and um and it's it's incredibly sad to see it's the most cruel disease it's the most cruel disease yeah. i think i've ever seen um that what it takes away from people yeah, yeah. well it sounds like you have um dealt with it really well well it, i i just wanted to to share with some people that that you know if if they're in the position where they've got elderly parents to make your lives easier, there are some really simple things you can do. And there's power of attorney, yeah. Will's power of attorney. Um, yeah. Think about finances as well. And think about what their finances look like and where where top-up fees might come from and, and how you get through that. Um, yeah. Because, uh, you know, if you think about it now, it's going to be easier to put in place when you need to. Because it, um, And then have an understanding that you have no idea how long it will go on for. It is yeah. finite, clearly. But you just yeah. don't know when that point is. Uh, and, and I think yeah. that, um, you know, you need to, to factor that in and, and plan for it. Plan for that because I didn't um, plan for it at all, really. Um, and, and listen and, and be observant about how behaviours may be changing in, in your yeah. parents' home when you go back, even if it's for a day, you know, or for a couple of days or whatever. Because there are clues there that I sort of kind of must have blithely Sort of ignored maybe i chose to ignore them because it, i was trying to push a problem oh, yeah. further down the line and if i'm honest i probably did that a bit i stuffed it down the line a bit yeah. um yeah because that's really noticeable and then look to where you can get help because there is loads of help out there and i cannot shout out enough how fantastic age uk are so they were great well um, let's post it on, burden, on you know yeah we'll we'll um we'll add them on uh, on linkedin and stuff and then we'll put it in the uh, in the comments yeah like please where, like, because they, like I, I can't tell you how when we how, share them. how fantastic they've been in 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 being positive and helping to ensure that that you know certainly for my mum that's left that she is she is um uh receiving what she's entitled to receive within our welfare system um, yeah. And because we just do not know how to do that, I, I you know, it's a mind no, field. Like, no, absolutely, we don't want to find help. Yeah, definitely. you know, definitely. between the social services, department of work and pensions, and whoever it might be, and it's very easy to get lost in the system. Um, so they were fantastic. So a big shout out to them, um, and then just talk to your friends, talk to your friends and your family about what you're going through and work, because it will have an impact on your working life. I and mean, I think we all like to pretend that none of these things matter. Sorry, that's not the right word. None of these things um, are going to um, distract you, but they do. They really do. Um, and, and, you know, no amount of stiff upper lip um, is, is going to sort of get you through. You need to talk to your to work and your colleagues just so that yeah. they know if you're in a bad mood or a bit tetchy or tired or you haven't done something. It's not necessarily because you're, you don't want to. It's just that your brain's full of other stuff. So um, I, I think it, it, it's worth it's worth letting people at work know, you know, in a confidential way if, if you need to. Yeah. Um, but I have found it massively helpful to talk about dementia. Um, and the other thing I'm now manic at, <laughs> whether it makes any difference or not, although a couple of my ex-colleagues in SCORE on the life side assure me that the, learning a new language is a fantastic way to reconnect neurons in your brain and whatever. Um, to keep I myself sparky too. so um, my italian's coming on <laughs> um but i do <laughs> I, I i've t started to take a bit of an interest in, in how our brains work and and um you know fearful that it's made me realize how important having your senses and your faculties are right? it's, it's an incredibly yeah, important you know and, and and when you get older you know my dad was very fit um but had dementia whereas my mum is a bit frailer but has all her marbles and I know which category I'd rather be in because at, at, yeah. at a certain point your enjoyment of life comes out of all the stuff that you interact with the people you see the places you go the things you read and that you look at and, and you feel and you take in and and uh, that's a massive thing so I do brain training every day <laughs> good so, good love it love it no, yeah, also, you know, this, kind of this, thing. Is, so, do this that. is great too right like like talking to people is also like they good, yeah. you know, like not just like not just yeah. going in front of your phone on the social media, yeah. but actually yeah. engaging. Look up and look out, and and just um, yeah, and and pick up hobbies and stuff that you used to love years ago, and and just you know try and get a bit of balance, but but use but use your brain, not just at work, use it differently because 
once you lose the ability to enjoy the view out the window or the, you know, you know, I think my dad saw what was outside and that it was sunny, but didn't really take pleasure from what he saw outside anymore, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Well, yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing. I really well, appreciate I it. It's a bit unstructured, um, which I apolog- I yeah, apologize awesome. for, but we like that. And um, yeah, edit yeah, yeah. it down, please edit it down. <laughs> And it's all good. I mean, people love hearing people's stories. So it's your, oh. your personal story, your journey, you've shared it, which is great. And it's going to help a lot of people. Oh, a lot of really? people go through it. If, you know? if, if it means that one person thinks, shit, I've got those power of attorney forms. Oh, sorry. I've got those yeah. power of attorney forms. God, I must get them signed. Sign them. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Because it's going to help. Thank yeah. you, Lois. Well, th- thank you. No, thank you. Um, and um, I wish you well over the, uh, the um, I would say well over the virus, but well over being uh, at home and all yeah, those no, things. I, and you, and, and you know, um, I'm sure hopefully, you know, we get to do this again face to face. Absolutely. But, uh, but, very the, be great our podcast, but this is a great way to, to, to do to do something. And, and hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully some people will listen to it and, and, and take something away from it, really. But uh um, I've been wanting to talk about it for a while and, and thank you very much for giving me a bit of a platform to do that. Pleasure, pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much.